Stan Gibalisco here once again, playing around a little more with my new toy, the Radio Shack TRMS Digital Multimeter. Uh, this uh, set of videos goes in the playlist called Teach Yourself E and E Miscellany, associated with Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. In the previous video, I showed you how to test rectifier diodes. Here are three of them, cathodes on the left, anodes on the right, negative terminal of a roughly 6-volt battery going to the cathode of the leftmost diode, and then these diodes presumably will reduce the voltage of that battery. The positive terminal of that battery goes to this terminal right here. You can't really see the red wire under there very well, but it is uh, underneath the meter there. And then we've got three resistors, and I'm going to measure those resistances now. I'm just going to double check them and be sure that we know what they are. This is where the positive terminal goes. The circuit is open right now so we can measure these resistances. 982 ohms, uh, 3.244 kilo ohms, 9.84 kilo ohms. Actually, these resistors are rated at 10 kilo ohms, 3.3 kilo ohms, and 1 kilo ohm. Now, I showed you what happens when we connect the, this little white uh, the pair of clip leads here that you'll see with the white wires coming off are a jumper. Now, we're going to connect the positive battery terminal. Well, first of all, let's just go back and measure the actual battery voltage. I don't want to accidentally dead short these diodes. That's what I was afraid I was going to do. I am the absent-minded. Professor, and I very well may dead short those diodes. Let's see, we have, now this is set for millivolts, but it automatically, uh, automatically adjusts itself. 6.32, and then the little uh, designator over there changes to a V, meaning voltage. I don't know how well you can see that, but it, this digital meter is cool because it, it sets its own range for you. That's what this little auto, see that little auto up there? means automatic uh, range adjustment. Really cool little thing for 49 bucks. Can't go very far wrong and the batteries are easy to replace too. They're just a couple of double A cells to make a 3 volt battery. So we got a 6.32 volts there. Now I showed you what happens if we don't have any load and I'm assuming that the internal resistance of this voltmeter is essentially infinite. We get a voltage drop caused by the first diode on the left of a little under three-tenths of a volt and another voltage drop of a little under three-tenths of a volt and another voltage drop of still a little uh, more under three-tenths of a volt about twenty-five hundredths of a volt I believe you can do the math you can take those numbers off there if you want and do the math but when there's no load and therefore no current in effect flowing through these diodes these silicon rectifiers only produce about point two five volts of a drop across each one. So if you've heard that they produce 0.5 or 0.6 volts of drop, that only applies when we uh, drive current through the things. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to connect that 980 some ohm resistor in series with the battery and the diodes using this jumper. Now we can measure the voltages across these diodes and see what we actually get. 617 millivolts. 611 millivolts. 616 millivolts. Across this pair, 1.228 volts. Across this pair, 1.227 volts. And then, across all three of them, 
1.845 volts. Once again, the actual battery voltage that we have now with this uh, amount of load on here, 6.25 volts. So the load caused the battery voltage to drop a little bit. This is the battery, these four AA cells, so that it's not a terribly robust battery. It's not like a big lantern battery or something like that. Now let's connect the roughly 3.3 kilo ohm resistor in series with here. Now remember what we had for voltage drops across these diodes. About 616. Well, now we got 610. That's experimental error for you there. 615. Get a little something different every time but pretty close to the same figures. Let's see what happens now when we connect the... Oops, I've got this uh, wired up wrong. I'm going to connect this end of the jumper up here. So now the positive terminal of the battery here through the 3300 ohm resistor, through the jumper, through the diodes, and back into the battery. And let's see what we had now. We had about 615 millivolts before. 562 millivolts. 555 point... about 555. About 562 or 3. This pair, 1.116. All three of them, 1.68. Oh, so the, the voltage drops have gone down a little bit as the amount of current has gone down through the diodes so but but not by much by a little bit so if someone tells you that the voltage drop across a silicon rectifier is absolutely constant uh, regardless of the current that flows through that is not quite the case now we have the 10k resistor positive battery terminal through the 10k through the jumper through the diodes back to the battery. See what we get now. 511 millivolts. So it's gone down again. 505, 506 millivolts. It's gone down again. 508, gone down again. 1.017 volts. Gone down again. 1.527 across all three. Gone down again. So as the current through these diodes goes down, the voltage drops across them also go down. As the current goes up, the voltage drops go up. Now, I'm not going to put a resistor of anything less than 1K in there because I don't want to have a, any problem with uh, overstressing any of these components. I want to just keep the currents really low. That's how this meter works, and that's how I can demonstrate for you that silicon diodes do not have a perfectly constant voltage drop. Now, I believe in my books, I, I in theory, uh, say yes, they do have a constant voltage drop of about 0.5 or 0.6 volts. Well, that's an oversimplification. In the real world, of course, everything is an oversimplification. But there's one thing that's an absolute immutable truth in the real world, here in the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America, and everywhere else, when you're done using any kind of meter that has a battery in it, switch it off. Otherwise, someday you're going to wake up in the morning and your meter's going to be dead. And I can't think of much of anything worse than ex except maybe waking up in the morning and not having any Diet Mountain Dew available. Stan Jibalisco, signing off until next time. So long.